Hi guys, it's Dr. Pete here. I'm a workplace psychologist and today I want to talk with you about team pulse systems, about team health and how we can maximize the well-being and performance of our teams. Now I've spent a number of years working in organizational transformation and I'm a big fan of supporting at the team level. We can help people one-on-one, -on -one, which is a great idea, and we can help entire workforces. But if we can really empower and enable teams, that's a really smart thing to do. So a lot of my work is about boosting team health. And when we try to understand what team health is, we have to think about this idea of collective efficacy. Collective efficacy is of course the shared belief in a team's capacity to engage together and achieve their goals. And there's two really important parts of that, achieving goals and engaging together. Now, when we think about how teams do this, high performance teams, they achieve their goals by aligning vision and action and performance reporting, and they engage well when they leverage diversity and understand work life and well-being. These four factors that sit underneath high performance teams, therefore are the secret to building collective efficacy and maximizing team health, it's therefore about understanding, uh, measuring and managing those four important parts of our high performance teams framework. Let's take a look at how a team pulse system allows us to do that and support each other to maximize team health. If we unpack what a team pulse system is, we can see there's three components. Let's start with our weekly pulse check-in. You can see taking our team's pulse, this is a simple process. We send each team member an individual pulse survey. It takes seven to 10 seconds to complete. It's a quick confidential survey using those four simple questions about collective efficacy and then we group the data at a team level to create the monthly scorecard. You can see here those four factors and that overall team health or collective efficacy rating and it's only got the group data. We want to keep those individual responses confidential and it allows you to have a proactive conversation about what to do next. You know, one of the most powerful parts of the Team Pulse system is the actual conversation we have as a high performance team about how we can improve team health over the month ahead. And that's the debrief protocol. Let's have a look at that now. A Team Pulse debrief has three steps. Identifying the priority areas from our scorecard, looking at some possible actions we could add to the mix of team activity over the following month to improve team health, and then making a conscious decision and commitment to do things differently in the month ahead. Step one then, in the example, you can see here KPI 4 or work-life well-being, that's our lowest one. So we then head to step two and we click on the website and pull up the example actions we could use. Have a pairs discussion, coming up with one or two ideas as a whole team we could commit to. And remember, depending on which of the four parts of team health are our lowest, we look at different prompt cards on the website. The last part is we share our ideas back with the team and commit to one or more team actions for the month ahead. And we live note or write that down so we're accountable to it on our Team Pulse scorecard. You can see then by engaging in our regular Pulse check-ins and our monthly scorecards and commitments to positive action, we're gonna optimize team activity over a course of our activity cycle and bit by bit over the course of the year, we're going to progressively improve team health. So that's a little bit of an understanding to get you started on using team pulse systems to build healthy teams. And we wanna build healthy teams because healthy teams are high performance teams. So looking forward to your experiences, uh, maximizing team health using the pulse system. And until next time, bye for now.